We're now beaming into Nerd FT Radio. This is Nerd FT Radio, where nerds full time, explorers of the metaverse, surfers of the blockchain, and not in our mom's basement. I'm your host, RSG, aka Dead Fellas, spiciest take runner up. Didn't win this time. And I'm here with Crypto Cryer, aka NRN's 2023 Flipper of the Year. And of course, we have a very special guest with us here today, Ryan Carson. I just, I probably shouldn't introduce you because you, everyone, if you're listening to this podcast, you know who Ryan Carson is from Proof, from the Daily Dose. Incredible stuff. Thank you so much for joining us today. How are you? I'm doing great. My mom knows who I am, but uh, <laughs> beyond that, no one does. No, it's fun. <laughs> I do really appreciate it. Awesome, man. No, We're excited absolutely. for having you on. Absolutely. Yeah. And we actually just listened to you on one of our other NRN podcasts, which was with, with Sniper. Sit down with Sniper. Awesome podcast. Awesome individual. I absolutely love Sniper and the oh, questions too. that he asked and everything yeah. like that. He's a good host. Have for sure. Abs- no, absolutely. So I know on that side of things, you did go ahead and introduce yourself, how you got into the space, the whole nine, crypto, NFTs, your employee that had the two laptops. I... Cryer, you definitely had two laptops back in the day for crypto mining, but we definitely want to take a different, a little bit of a different route on this side, because again, Hey, if you want to listen to Ryan Carson's story of how he got into the space, just head over to sit down with Sniper and listen to that. So on this side of things, we're going to go ahead and just nerd out a little bit and talk about the technology that all three of us probably talked to all of our family members at Thanksgiving and (laughs) In in Christmas and oh, say, yeah. hey, you should get into NFTs. And they're probably a little bit so little tired upset right now. They're yeah. either tired or they're a little upset because they invested in the oh boy, it's not the best right well, now. But we'll see. Yeah. We'll I see. love it. Ex- Go. No, absolutely. So we'll dive into that. And on the side of where we can go ahead and get started on things is what you're doing with Daily Dose and how you're using the blockchain to create this community, this insane, massive community when you're doing these spaces. So how, when you look at the technology that we talk about all day long in this space, what is it that just like strikes you as this is going to be the next big, the next big thing? I just blown away at people's excitement and, and just desire to collect POAPs. I think it reveals a really fascinating human behavior, right? Because I think businesses and clubs and people have been trying to figure this out forever. And I'm telling you, we don't have to try to get people to listen to Daily Dose. Like we don't have to try to get them to want PO apps. Like they want them. And I, here's, I think why you own them, right? So these are digital assets, right? So yep. that, that yep. old school feeling of here's a, here's a point for flying on our airline, which no one gives shit about. Right. And cause it <laughs> yeah. doesn't really get you anything anyway. It's, it's not that. It's not like a coupon. It's not a discount. It's a digital thing. And what's cool about POAPs is they have art. So they feel collectible. We all understand collectibles here. So Spe- Look at this guy. He's yeah. Definitely- <laughs> yeah. I know a little bit. I know a little bit of collectibles. Yeah. So it's that surprise and delight. Oh, I'm listening to the show. The show's fun. And like, oh my God, I just grabbed a collectible. And that collectible can yeah. be stacked and redeemed for something exciting in the future. So that's the magic. No, absolutely. Go yeah, ahead. I definitely agree. I think the whole aspect of POAPs is definitely introduced a, and this that loyalty of it. Like you you collect these POAPs, there's something that you already enjoy listening to. Now you get something to show off that you've been a listener for 10 years or later down the road. These are things that, uh, you know, it's a two-way street really. Like you're putting extra effort in to release these POAPs to everybody so that people can collect them and then people are receiving them so that they can showcase mm-hmm. that they've been loyal listeners and been part of the community for such a long time. Exactly. Like we we ha- have people that that screenshot the fact that they collected the original POAP. And I think the thing that people miss is that they think the art's got to be amazing and everything has to be shiny and perfect. First POAP art was literally clip art that I found on the internet because I was like, I just want to try doing something. Out. Yeah. And so I think what's special is that people can brag and say, I own this POAP. No one can take it from me. For sure. I was there. Uh, it's fun. It's fun to see people collect them. No, Do you I think that? Uh, 
go, I was going to say, like, again, on the collectible side, you just looking at my screen, and if you are listening, you head over to YouTube, or you, if you've been listening to the show, you guys just know I absolutely love collecting in real life collectibles as well as NFTs. And when you add this, it feels like a gamification aspect of it because you have to listen. And then for listening, you not only are intaking such incredible content, information, yeah. updates on the space, whatever it is, but you're also rewarding that it's like what you happens over at coinbase when you're like oh look you can get like five bucks if you take this quiz and you just go into the quiz as you well. do something yeah it might as well you do something for it but then the really great thing about it is for the people that just click the button until you get it right yeah good awesome you got a few bucks but if you actually <laughs> listened if you actually not listen excuse me read it and you understood what the heck this coin is you get to learn something and on your side these individuals that are in the community they're in taking all this information they're absorbing it all they're gonna leave not only with that collectible with more knowledge more information a different way of viewing things so it's a win-win on both sides because in this space, the unfortunate thing is that one has a very quick attention span and they don't have the ability to intake much <laughs> and actually learn. And what yeah. you're doing is not forcing them, but like it's giving them a chance to like actually intake Solidify that knowledge that they've oh, digested. Exactly. I, I just felt, and I 100% stole the POAP idea from G-Money and I told him that. And, then, <laughs> and I gave him all the credit and said, you were the first one that I ever heard of that used POAPs to build an allow list. And he did yeah. sort of admit one. And it's genius because you're rewarding Absolutely your loyal community and it takes time to do, but not, it's not a grind because you're getting value. If I can create a valuable show for you that educates you, connects you, makes you laugh, becomes a part of your routine every day. And you also potentially get rewarded digitally for that. Like it's just a win-win. Like, the psychology is interesting, right? It, it's called unexpected rewards, right? So this if you come to the show every day and you get paid to come, like you get a guaranteed PO app or a guaranteed yeah. coin, it feels bad. It's not fun. But knowing, oh my God, there might be a drop or I might get this. And when it doesn't happen, you're like, oh no. And when it happens, you're like, yay. It's a human psychology element that, that really, it really works. And we all want it. So it's been fun to see that roll out. Yeah, I definitely agree. And something as someone who's been in Web2 tech, software engineer for what, like 10, 20 years now, right? What do you see the kind of like background of, of that shaping the way that you're executing your vision now? Is it something that you've stolen a lot from or is it something that you're reworking completely? I think everything we had hoped for in the past that we could do is now possible. So this idea of truly rewarding your community is now possible because you literally have a wallet address and you can rain down rewards <laughs> on people. <laughs> And it's just great. It's like people can finally win. We're not in the world of stock options anymore where you, the only way you could win is to get a stock option, which may or may not be valuable. Yeah. Now you can have a digital asset and you can do whatever you want with it. Yeah, I definitely no, absolutely. Agree Hey, listen, for the people that's still in the stock game, we're not saying anything bad about you. Just maybe you should jump over to this side and just <laughs> yeah. learn about this in community and yeah. owning those assets and doing everything on that side. But another thing I did want to touch upon was what exactly, like, how do I put this together? So what exactly at the end of this all with the PO apps and everything like this outside of the daily dose, like what exactly this POAP thing could truly do. I always talk to Cryer about, imagine going to like Disney and every single day it's a POAP. And people are like, why would someone want that? I'll tell you guys right now, I live in Orlando. I literally just can, I can see the fireworks from outside my house. I literally just walk outside, and look up, it's right there, right? When I go to these parks, the lines for the merchandise, for the limited edition things, for all these things, and they're not just like kids. They're like grown, grown adults yeah. wanting this. You and when you, you, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, me literally, but I look young, so like I, I can still play it off. That's the good thing about not having facial hair. You just like weird, but ignore me every time. <laughs> exactly. I'm good. But on the side of what this truly could mean, I really think POAPs could be that route of when we talk in the last like few months, everyone's been saying like we need to like 
put a blanket over the word NRN or excuse me, a blanket over the word of NFT. We're not supposed to tell people their NFTs, the blockchain, and that's how the masses are going to come in. But I really believe it has to be more than just that. It has to, you have to find like an actual use case, accessible, easy, the whole nine for anyone in the world. My grandma can use it. A yep. five-year-old can use it. 10 year old by the way these five and 10 year olds literally can use their iphones better than me and crier combined so <laughs> they're gonna they're gonna be fine they're definitely gonna be fine but more the side of i again i know me and crier we're really big into po apps and just collecting them in the whole nine and it just has that feeling of collecting like you said before and on the side of that you can also reward with it do you see a future where all these companies go the route of right now it's polygon but really it's going to be on the po app side where you're going to reward those individuals for attending proof of protocol the whole nine. Oh, 100 percent. so th the way this is going to roll out is that every company in the world that has a physical location will start to drop geo located po apps and starbucks is already beginning to do this with odyssey right so What's going to stamps. Yeah. yeah, literally. And it makes sense. Like it's a real world treasure hunt, right? This yep. is, if you go back to really nerdy days doing geocaching, why do people walk through the marshes and the woods to find little boxes? It's because it's built into us as humans. So a company just has to say, hey, guess what? That's right. So if you, if you grab a PO app from five plus locations, then we airdrop you this NFT that does X, Y, Z. And then if you collect five of those, then you can stack those and you can turn them in and redeem them for ABC. You can literally gamify the whole. That, that burn mechanic introduction there, you get the five of these, five That's of these, five of these. everyone's talking about right now too. Good <laughs> Lord. Everyone's burning everything right now. The reason why POP works so well is because actually you don't have to understand anything yeah. about the blockchain. And you exactly. don't have to have a wallet. So this is really key is you just have an app. It's called Po app and you can mint off the blockchain. And it's not exactly. really minting, it's claiming. So they're like, just enter this code. It's very web two centralized. It's saying, hey, you grab this app. And then at some point it emails you and says, by the way, if you want to mint to the blockchain, click here. You can here, yeah. And then, so the onboarding is seamless. Like it feels normal. You're not putting in something. You're still using email. You're still using yeah. all of your old stuff. It's not a big change for you. Oh, that's it's why it's something works. you want. Not signing transactions, anything like that. Again, no. one thing that we always say is when you want to get into stocks, we tell people use Robinhood. Do we necessarily love Robinhood? Probably not, but it's so, the UI UX is so easy, so simple. It's on the crypto side, Coinbase. Do we absolutely love Coinbase? No, but the UI UX is so easy to use the whole nine on the POAP side, it's level and uh, an entry level way into NFTs. I'll tell you guys right now on the side, when Cryer, my girlfriend, Carolina, when we went to South by Southwest, her first NFT was the POAP that she got okay, at Doodles wonder, and it was doodles, no, the yeah, doodles, doodles one. And no. it was so easy because all she did was scan it, got it. I want more now. Yes. And then that's where well, now she just wants a doodle, but that's besides it's a little more expensive. But, <laughs> but the other thing is the UI of the POAP works right so yes it's not like some open sea profile or some weird place where you have it's here is my po apps and people literally screenshot all their daily dose po apps um and so it's so simple claiming is simple showing is simple and those mechanics really do matter and i just think so so go back to the days when you would eat cereal i still would eat cereal every day if i could but i just would be super like unhealthy if I did that, but that's what I wanted. To do. Wait, I thought the news just came out that eating cereals better hey, than other man. stuff. That's what I thought. The good, I need to read that so I would eat cinnamon toast crunch every day if I could. And then we used to cut out the little like scan codes, yeah. and then you would turn the them box in. tops. Yeah. See, this is literally the same behavior, right? It's like I want to collect these things and redeem them, and it's fun. And so all we're doing is enabling you to actually own these assets, which can be collectible, which can be unlocked in a game, which you go to location one, two, three. It, I just can't wait. Like it's going to be actually fun. And on the company side, the friction of, you don't have to mass produce toys to then send out to physical addresses and do all this extra stuff. It's like, no, we hire somebody to rig up a 3D model of this and bam, it's yep. completed. So well, that's then, also another friction, I think, reduced there. It, it is, but also imagine what's going to happen when, AR, when Apple releases all their AR glasses, right? Yeah. Then all these locations are going to drop NFTs, which will be visible in AR. Your glasses, yeah. This is just Pokemon Go but with yeah. actual assets that you can collect y'all oh, yeah, like, it's going to be so fun. I, I'm already, I, I don't have, I don't have any more wall space. So <laughs> yeah. that's going to help me switch a over. Bunch. 
I can just go <laughs> virtual and I'm going to be, I'm going to be okay. But again, I really like the thought process on the Pokemon go aspect of it. Cause it is, it's, and when you think about it, humans, like we said before, we just like to collect. There's literally humans that go to every state in the United States and pick up a leaf. I had a teacher that used to do this and she put it in a book and I'm like, you got a leaf from Massachusetts. You got a leaf from California. Oh my God. I'm like, no, that's not it. But that's a just what leaf. she like. No, yeah. Go. That's what she liked to do. And you had to store it the whole night on top of that. When you have all these collectibles at home or even like comic books prior, we talked about this, I think last episode, they can get ruined so easily. And that's why the valuable yeah. like rated at 9.8 or uh, 10.0 are going for thousands of hundreds of thousands of millions of dollars for comic books and video games and all this. But when you talk about the blockchain, that just takes away all of that. The shipping, of that. losing your the shipping, damages, all this thing. 100%. And it's just it just takes away from all of it. And of course, not everyone can have this massive house or all this space to just collect all these things. And I just really do think this is going to be the future. If you told me right now half of these things I could have it virtually. I'd probably say no because I'm weird, but the future <laughs> me or future people would say yes. Oh, I definitely think right. And so um, we had, uh, we this had, would be the way. We had Frey, the founder of Americana, on the day. Yeah. The oh, nice. Ago. And we talked about tokenizing collectibles and then trading them on the blockchain, right? And, it, and so for the listeners that I don't, don't know what that means or haven't learned about that, it's very simple, right? So in in the future, instead of buying a pair of Jordans and then putting them in a box in your closet and holding them and saying, cool, I've got the threes from this certain year in this release. What you'll do is you'll go up to a service like Americana, you'll pay them, a courier will show up, they'll pick up the shoes and then they'll grade them and then they'll store them in a, a vault and then they'll tokenize it as an NFT. And then you can trade that NFT seamlessly. And it probably will never leave the vault. Like it, you'll sell it to someone who wants to collect it, who wants to say, I'm my collection of threes. I have 35. I own it. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Or if you say, I want to redeem it, I do want to hold it. I've got a, a crazy office like you and I want to show everything. But that's the future. <laughs> like, you remove all the friction be, be, behind collecting. It's just gone. Like, we're and we're, you can already see we're Artifact and Nike already doing that type of thing a little bit already, going down that path for sure. Yeah, we're getting um, there. I still don't understand why Nike doesn't really get on board i just don't understand yeah. like, like why half in half out their, yeah why can't i buy bit, importance yeah. as nfts i just don't understand they'll get takes there takes time or, we gotta we'll get, get there interrupted. so we'll yeah. see absolutely and the one last thing i did want to mention on the poap side cry you've talked about this before on the side of this individual you have this customer this fan and they have your poap in their wallet or their nft or whatever having that access of like all the other data and information behind it with like their wallet, sometimes even like the location, the name, all these oh, yeah, things from the company also side, yeah. from the company side is going to allow them to understand that person even more because they have all this information that's literally transparent and out there on the blockchain that truly the value of da uh, data is literally data is more valuable than so much in the world. Yeah, to, I think. Like it, everything pretty much, maybe, but maybe not food. But yeah, but that's besides the point. <laughs> but data is one of those like top things right now. And on the side of what all like the blockchain can store and give that data to these companies and these organizations is truly like an understatement. And that's where as a person in Web3, all of us, everyone that listens, everyone that's on Twitter, shit posting and doing this, when we think about what this technology can do, that's the way I truly believe we need to present it to all these people it's how can this technology benefit the all, the thing that you already are doing how can it make yeah. it better how can you level it up how can you make it more efficient so again on the side of just more interactive exactly or gamification yeah. whatever it is so when i see what you are doing with the daily dose and just adding up everything and by the way i do want to make a quick shout out to clemente awesome guy i used to talk okay. to him yeah i used to talk to him all the time when he was over at wgmi if i'm not mistaken yeah, yeah. so Awesome guy, super down to earth. And him and I would nerd out all the time too on sports That's and great. everything. Such awesome a good co-host. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Clemente has helped, really helped us level up. Daily Dose has been great. And let me ask you, I actually never asked him how exactly you two met and whatnot. Like, what was it? I actually started the Daily Dose. I actually did the first couple by myself. Then I had people hop up on stage and they're really helpful. And one of them was named Mech. And she was a great Twitter space host. 
So then I said, why don't you want to co-host with me for a while? And she was super helpful early on. And then Clemente came inbound and I had been on the WGMI Twitter spaces a couple times and he yeah. was running them. And then he just DM me and said, Hey, love what you're doing with the daily dose. Like I'd love to be helpful. You know, here's a couple ideas I have for content, for segments. So he just provided value. And we talk about that all the time in the show. How do you get into web three? How do you get a job? Find provide a value. Or provide value. Find your niche. Boom. So he did it. And then he just crushed it. So then I said, let's go. Be afraid to take your shot again yeah. all as well. Reaching out to big people all the time. I feel like I've never coming. I've been doing newsletters and stuff for crypto for a super long time. Never had any traction whatsoever. And then when NFT started, it's instantly like people wanted to contribute. People want to help. People enjoy your content. People are trying to engage with you through a different means. That community-based aspect is just it's just huge, right? It's just such a, I don't know, a game changer for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. It's so fun to be in the industry at this phase. And, and I'm, I'm glad that we all made it through... 2022 together and Bonds, yeah. the highs were amazing and the lows were brutal and i just feel like 23 the folks that are still here are ready to go and understand the highs and lows and what really needs to happen and everyone's a bit more mature and it's exciting i can't wait yeah 100 yeah i'm from like the 2018 2019 lows i get a completely different vibe i feel like it was such a wasteland back then and it was like just a lot of the gamblers and not no one actually they're still here but it's just on the nft side the crypto twitter people are still insane i feel like yeah. oh yeah they're <laughs> it's on steroids. they're a little yeah, yeah. yeah they're a little out there but the at least the nft people there it's still they they understand that like community aspect a little bit more and that we're trying to build this together right this is all DAOs, and we're trying to unify that one thought process mind more so than just like how do I benefit the most from this? How do I make money? No, how do we all participate together and elevate ourselves as yep. individuals? Um, totally. I feel like just how you were saying you stole something from G Money. No, this is all open source. This is all we're trying to. You improved it a little bit. We're learning, or, you know, you you took something a little bit different, a different approach. We've seen stuff with like checks going off. Now we see thousands of derivatives of <clears throat> artists that have taken it over, take their own spin on it. I just think that's such a cool aspect for Me all too. Of this web. <clears throat> Hey, listen, after you get out of high school and college, <laughs> you can probably cheat a little bit on what you do and try to improve it. And like I said, level <laughs> yeah. up. Hopefully nope, people can some be checks like, oh, here. I got to do it differently. No, just take ideas from everyone. It's it's still so early. And for all of us to be successful, not just one person can be successful, not just Yuga. And I really do think, by the way, Yuga understands that they could be successful, they but they still need we'll be better with other them. communities to be successful for this to happen. So when you have an idea, Idea, make sure that it's not an echo chamber and you're reaching totally. out and you're looking at other people and taking the good, but also taking the bad and be like, ah, we're not going to do that. And we're going to go ahead and make this into something truly awesome. And obviously for you, as well as the last 20 years of being an entrepreneur, on top of that in the NFT space with what you did with Proof, obviously that was a massive success and just being in there in the trenches with with the proof team moonbirds the whole nine how was it how was that like building that whole entire community that whole entire project like what was that behind the scenes was it like a startup feel what was it exactly it was fascinating cuz kevin rose and i have been friends for a long time geez since 2006 or something and so we had been talking all those years and Kevin's really good at seeing the future and he spotted crypto punks. He spotted Fidenzas. He spotted yeah. everything. And, and he started doing the proof podcast and he, I was basically, and again, this is on sniper show, so I won't go in too deeply, but my last business was being acquired and I was starting to pay attention to what was happening in the space and Ethereum. Like I had been on Bitcoin and understood that, but I didn't understand like smart contracts. Yeah. Some, so just, yeah. Started to get into that. And then, Kevin's like, I'm doing this podcast. You should listen to it. So I really went and dug in and then he's like, cool, we're going to do a collection. That's called Proof. And I was like, neat. I want to mint one. <laughs> and so he's like, okay, <laughs> I'll, don't worry. So I'll hold one back for you, whatever the mint price is. So I was like, great. And then just joined literally in the Discord as a one guy and, uh, and just got in there. And Kevin, that first Discord is just so eye changing. I feel <laughs> like that, that it's crazy. Yeah. I was, and I was new to Discord. My kids were using Discord, but I wasn't. And so I had to learn my way through it. And then I think, I think Kevin 
and Justin, who's the, they're the co-founders. Yeah. I'm just a friend and was an employee, but their vision, I don't think they had this wild, we're going to change the world vision. It was like, let's create a nice community that cares about NFTs. Let's make it high quality. Let's have a good time. Let's dig into the art. And Kevin is full-time at True Ventures. So I just joined, was having fun. And I love building community. I realized my superpower is building community. I love it. It's my jam, right? <laughs> and I just got in there and do what I do, right? I started holding voice chats and hangouts and started learning about everybody. And Kevin would invite me on the stage during town halls. And after a while, I was like, geez, I'm just doing this like full-time. This is so fun. It's so, not even like work anymore. It's just like no, you're hanging just, out with everybody. It's great. It, it's a total blast. <laughs> and the turning point or the funny point was in my night, 12 year old tapped me on the shoulder. He's like, dad, are you like a discord mod now? What do you do? <laughs> there Unpaid you go. Discord mod. Yeah, um, hey, yeah, let me just say, <laughs> grown ass man sitting around on discord all day. You're right. It was just so funny. I was like, yeah, I kind of am. And, and so then I just pinged him. I was like, I'd love to join. Like, why don't I join as your CEO and help you build this thing? This is like exciting. Yeah. And this is before Grails and before Moonbird, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think at that point, I just threw myself into it and had fun. And it very, it was very super startup. -y. It was like me, Justin, and Kevin. Like, we were the only employees. Just figuring it out. Yeah. yeah. Had fun. It was a blast. It just, it got way bigger than we possibly. Than you guys expected. Absolutely. <laughs> like, oh my God. And now they're, <laughs> I mean, they're building. I think one of the premier web three companies in the world now, and that's amazing. That's a big machine. That's going to be fun for them. For sure. Absolutely. Super interesting. I like how the going on the idea of the startup idea, this is a perfect place to try new things, get feedback from the community. We had a little bit of, I saw that was a little bit of a backlash on some of your changes to the PO app stuff. What did you like learn from that? So someone who is growing in this space? Well, I mean, I don't think there's a lot of backlash or any, it's just like it, we, it, People want PO apps. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, anytime you don't give them PO apps, like they get mad. <laughs> They're getting angry. You get a mob on your hands. It's not like fraud or backlash <laughs> or just, but I'm trying to be responsible and thoughtful yeah. about it. So we've minted 130,000 PO apps in three months. Great word. It's bonkers. And we could mint millions if we wanted to. Being you know, restrictive. Yeah. We're, <laughs> and, and we're living with what PoApp's vision is of a PoApp, right? So PoApp is a company. Yeah. Right? They have a vision for what PoApp should be and you need to collaborate with them, right? And they don't want farmers minting PoApps, right? So we've been very controlled about how many we issue. So anyway, at, to battle farmers, they introduced this puzzle that you have to solve. And it's hard. And Patricia, you know, the founder and I were chatting over Telegram nonstop about this, and it wasn't a surprise to me that this happened. And I actually thought it was a good idea before I used it. And, but as soon as I, I tested and used it, I was like, damn, this is hard. And it feels not very fun. Like it doesn't have the same feeling of you enter the secret code and you get the PO app. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, I don't, I don't want to do this to my community. Like this kind of sucks. So we're going to pause. We're just going to stop giving out PO apps for a while. We'll start. Don't worry. And now we're playing a game. So now okay. there's a game we're playing on the show. And if you figure out all the clues, then you unlock a guaranteed allow list spot. So we're having a bit of fun. Like the goal is have fun with your community, delight them and do the right thing long-term to take care of them. For sure. Out of all that you said there, the fun aspect of it. And when we talk about on the gamification side of things, Web3 gaming, all these companies coming out and making these games and they're not fun and the whole thing of it all is yeah. like you, you gotta make games that are fun and if you eat not even games just the process has to be fun and all yeah. these things um uh, yeah let me ask you something ryan uh, before nfts before all of this were you into video games were you into collecting i gotta know because typically those are the type of people that are in this space now oh yeah so it you listeners might not be able to see a wide enough shot, but I'm surrounded by Lego, right? So I am obsessed with Lego. I, I had like- And back to the future. Yeah. If any time <laughs> in money, I would buy Lego and I would surround myself. <laughs> I would live in Lego. So I would especially go back and collect the original Lego city sets. They're not cheap now, right? Yeah. So collecting love Lego. I love, love, love Star Wars. I just- go nuts for that. And then I happen to be obsessed with Back to the Future. So there's a lot of collecting in my life. I also collect Jordans. Like I said, I love the threes. And so that's very much all part of my life. And video games. Yeah. I was a heavy gamer when I was younger. I, then I had kids and yeah. I love Then that's where it yeah. <laughs> really, really staunches the flow like, of gameplay. Almost the last time I seriously played 
was, uh, I remember it clearly, Jackson, my 14 year old now, he had just been born and I brought him home from the hospital and I, and Jill had, had gone to bed and I was on like dad duty for a little while. <laughs> it's like 11 PM or something. He was in his little carrier and he was asleep. So I'm like, well, I'm bored as hell. Yeah, I'm just gonna let's go get it on. So let's go play some Grand Theft Auto. There we go. So, so I turn it on, <laughs> cranking away. And you know how GTA works. You always end up with a bazooka shooting police. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> five five stars somewhere trying to get done this. And you feel bad. You're like, oh, this is bad. I really shouldn't be doing this, but it's fun. And there's people screaming and people are dying. <laughs> and then I'm thinking, oh my God, my kid is literally hearing people screaming and dying. And I'm sh like shooting bazookas at the <laughs> yeah. law enforcement. I was like, I'll do it to you. This is fucked up. I probably shouldn't do this. <laughs> this is yeah, fucked it's, up. That's, 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 <laughs> gotta I'll it definitely in. do it. That's, so that I definitely will do stopped. it for you. I just stopped. And then it's, and I was just too busy and tired all the time. So I would love it. <laughs> and that's my life. 14 years later, tired of me. <laughs> sounds like sounds what I got. I got a four year old and a two year old, so I I'm very sympathetic of of you there. I would love to play all the time, and when I do have time, like I play Civ Six or something with my kids. And we yeah, play that's a good one. And I've gotten to Dota two, but I suck at it. There you go. <laughs> okay, okay. I've been telling Crier that I'm still on the younger side, no kids at the moment, but. I'm able to play these games, but like with Fortnite and all these things where you're now you're building, now you're doing all this crazy stuff. Like back in the day, it was just like Call of Duty. You shoot at the person, you're good to go. Halo, you shoot at the person, you're good. Now it's like, <laughs> Whoa, it's shoot down the building stuff. that they're hiding in. Then you got to find you gotta them. Then you got to yeah, shoot it's, them. Yeah, it's pretty long. wild. But no, uh, yeah, it's crazy. But on the side of like you said, on the side of Legos, by the way, if I used to build so many Legos when I was younger, and I know now if I got Legos, it, I would need a second room. I don't know yeah. where I'd put it. Those stuff. <laughs> uh, it takes over your life. I mean, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. I, I just got Hayes' first set of Legos oh. for his four-year-old Christmas. He wow. is literally, I have, for the past two weeks, he's a big builder. He was already a big magnetile builder. So he's taken in, just taking it hard. He's always like, can we go to the Lego store now? I'm like, oh man, I don't know. <laughs> this is going to be breaking my bank here. Oh my God. If my kid asked me, I'd be like, yep, yep, let's go. Yeah. Yep, let's yep, do let's this. Let's go ahead. Now. Cryer, the thing is, Cryer, he, he's <laughs> always with me every two, what we video chat all the time. And you see this, so you see the future of what could happen if you just give him that extra Lego set. <laughs> yeah. So you're like, we got to slow it down. This started like when I was like 18, actually. It doesn't even start when I was like younger. It was, I don't know where that came so, from, but the love of Mark. Another big Lego collector in the space is Jimmy Eath. So I listened to his view on, on Yuga's show. And, and apparently he bought so much Lego that actually Lego banned him for a while. Like he, he was a bot or something? They just thought, what is this guy doing? And he was reselling. So it's a funny story. You should listen to it. But uh, that's where Lego collecting goes if you're not careful. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You get banned. Path. You literally are like, hey, listen, the company hates that I'm buying so many that they banned. That's wild. But, yeah. and, but it, think about what Lego could do with NFTs. Oh, yeah. Think about exactly. what Disney could do. Man, I'm sure they get it. And we talked about this on the show. Like Bob Iger is back at Disney he's, now. Yeah. And I, he's bullish on Web3. So it's oh, like, yeah. I just feel like there's literally a door that they could walk through. There'd be billions of dollars. Yeah. And all they could do is walk through the door. Like they have the IP. I just yeah, don't they already spend, got it. I'm going to spend so much money. As, no, I say this constantly. Like, Look at like Blizzard. Like Blitter, Blizzard yeah. has like billions of gold transferred on oh. World of Warcraft daily and their auction house. Like if that was an ERC twenty, they'd be making like, f uh, like just hand money over hand over fist every day, like just I, infinite money. I know it just blows my mind. And then again, and then your players are also rewarded because now they the time that they spent wow people are just they haven't touched the sun in like two decades, and uh, they need to get paid. <laughs> oh, I don't that's awesome. That used to be me. I guess it, I'm one of those guys. Yeah, yeah. It was even now. It's funny. Like I went outside this morning to get coffee with my wife. I'm like, oh, I haven't been outside yet. <laughs> it's, it's, it just oh, hits you. It's, wow. <laughs> no, that's it's funny, but yeah. no, I, but hey, you listen, you're a builder. It's time to build. And that's sometimes you got to take the sacrifice of not seeing the sun. sun. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. Or touching some grass is what we like to go ahead and say. But again, it's super awesome just to hear the backstory of it. Again, on the Lego side, the Jordans, video game. Typically, if you're in that realm of collecting, in that realm of gaming, like when you see this, it's like you get that aha moment. The thing I always said, I actually had a spaces last night with Lore Lore Crier where I was saying like, listen, I had a my next door neighbor 
He is now a crypto accountant. He in Whoa. when, when <laughs> yeah, he's it's unbelievable. My taxes are spot on every year. What's going on <laughs> with him was back in the day when Bitcoin was at five hundred bucks. He was I can I remember I can literally envision this. My parents' living room was a couch on the left, a mini couch on the left, a big couch in the middle, big couch on the right. He was on the mini couch, and he's telling me and my dad like. Buy do Bitcoin, do this. <laughs> and we're laughing in his face. And he's like, all right. Okay. And then that same, obviously he had the last laugh there. But on this other side was one day he just comes to me. He's like, Mateo, Red Sox. I like, yo, like NFTs. You can go the route of, there's two routes you can take here. You can go NBA Top Shot, which you're a big basketball fan. Go that route. Or you put in a little, of effort, a little bit of effort and you learn what a MetaMask is. You know what your own wallet is. You go into ETH and figure it out. And me being the smart person that I am every single day, I went the easy route and lost the hundreds of probably thousands of dollars instead of going <laughs> the other way. And now I have a bunch of worthless NBA Top Shot moments. But, oh, yeah. but he knew that the target audience, like he knew you collect so much stuff. You love marvel you love dc you love all these star wars all this stuff this is the route for you and then once i got into that that was i just jumped in the rabbit hole now i'm like crypto this crypto that web3 this web3 that and here we are having a podcast with ryan carson on nerd ft radio that's how we wrap up the, the origin story oh it's crazy yeah you go down this rabbit hole and you're like i think i'm in a cult oh yeah. no you are it's not that you're not yeah you are yeah yeah who's the leader of the cult um we don't even know the gm who whoever invented gm Vitalik, I don't know. Yeah, Vitalik, I would say. Who <laughs> doesn't like the monkey pictures? I don't know. I think it has to be someone else. Uh, it's all right. We'll find a, a We'll a find him. Uh, we need to find the voice of NFTs. That's what go. it is. We need the Stan Lee of NFTs. That's go. what we're that's what we're waiting for <laughs> to make the journey go further. But uh, but yeah, man, again, thank you. Thank you so much for stopping by. It's been a pleasure. And on top of that, for the listeners, if you do want to hear a little bit more of Ryan Carson with NRN, he was on the podcast, Sniper's podcast, Sit Down with Sniper. Awesome hour. Or how was it? I think it was like 45 to an hour long. Super awesome stuff. Learn how he got into it. Maybe a little less nerdy on that side, but that's why we're here to <laughs> right. nerd out out and do this now i do have to ask one last question obviously the last year there was a lot of airdrops and you were rewarded by doing stuff and then you got the airdrops if it was ens if it was looks rare the whole nine let me ask you this if you had one video game growing up and you can't say gta because you already said that one game <laughs> growing up that because of all the hours and all the actions that you did in the game that right now dropped an airdrop for a bunch of tokens, what would be that one game that you could retire, retire on? <laughs> oh my God. It would be, oh gosh, there's some old school one. I would say probably Super Mario. Yeah, I just <laughs> went to town. Just Nintendo, went to town. There it is. Nintendo, <laughs> there it is. Uh, one, two, three. I just absolutely. The whole collection. It. Yeah, I'd be rich. <laughs> Right now. Right. filthy rich we'd be balling right now but hey by the way i can actually add some nerd stuff at the end right here the super mario movie is coming up very yeah. soon what's awesome i did not know that in like two what? months you didn't know now. there was a super mario movie Crit hey, oh yeah live at not live action what would you call it <laughs> animated yeah yeah it's like an animated yeah it looks great it looks really it's good. chris Pr chris pratt as oh. the voice of Mario. So I don't know. I don't know about Looks, that. Okay. But and Jack, Bowser is Jack Black, right? That's that the good one. Oh, that's yeah. the good one. That's the good one. Oh, okay. You should watch the trailer right now. It's fantastic. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, <laughs> definitely check it out. And on the other side, I know that I said this last time, but remember, get your Ant-Man and Wasp tickets. They just went out live, I think, a few days ago, five days ago. This movie is going to be so good. And Kang is going to destroy Kang is going to do what Thanos did for the first half of Marvel. So always check it out there. And you guys know, if you ever want to talk Marvel or Marvel Snap, I've oh, Crier, you know me. That's why you haven't heard from me in a while. <laughs> yeah. I've been just playing Marvel like, Where the Snap. hell did my co-host go? It's been yeah, I'm just, just playing gone. all day long. <laughs> Don't tell my boss that though. But yeah, all day long. But again, Ryan, thank you so much for stopping by with us nerds over here at Nerd FT Radio. And again, good luck with everything that you're doing. And you'll probably see us just jumping into that daily dose sometimes being like what's up Hop absolutely i appreciate you guys thanks for having me on the show it's been fun absolutely awesome, awesome man great talking we'll catch you guys later this week peace